Hello again. This is Athena Jezik, and today I'd like to work the back again and uh, identify maybe muscle knots, knots under the shoulder blades, things like that, and explain to you a little bit what to look for, how to, how to work them. So we'll get going with that, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the back to get the right viscosity, and we'll be doing massage. And I want to clarify something because massage doesn't mean you dig into people. That doesn't mean that that's a massage. Massage actually relates to muscles. You could call it myotherapy, which means that it's just working the muscles. So I had a comment that said that light work was just whispering and, you know, very light work. That I was working the muscle and that is massage technically. So you need to be clear on that. Just because some people like to do deep tissue or like to receive deep tissue work doesn't mean that that is a massage because they like to be a little more forceful with the muscles. They're working the muscles and the lighter, more subtle work is also working the muscles. It's just doing it differently. It's not forcing. It's allowing the body to make the changes itself. So you have a choice as to what you feel is best for your body and which one gives you the best results. So I've got this pretty well covered. I'm going to um, start at the head. And the neck. And we're going to just, I'm going to just show you what I've done over the time of doing it. And I'm going to find things in Karina that it is probably shouldn't be there, little bumps or crepitus. And I did find some crepitus over here, right on this bone, the, the scapula. Crepitus is a hard thing. Nobody really knows what it is. But to me, it feels like it's a tense muscle down where it's attaching, so it's more in the tendon. A lot of people have it. It's just kind of a bump, and it kind of crunches. Now, to work the crepitus, you're going to have to go in subtly to it. And that is something that I do teach in my foundations course. And then you can go along that muscle and, again, uh, to get rid of crepitus, if you go in more actively and more forcefully, you're not going to be able to undo it. It's a very hard thing to undo regardless of what, what's being done, but it can be done. And it's usually, you usually find it along here. And there it is again because the, this lifts, this muscle lifts the shoulders up and a lot of tension is held there. So I'm going to treat this like a knot and not every bump that you have on your body is a knot. I've had uh, people come and say they have knots all over their body but they're, they're really not knots, they're not a muscle knot anyway. So we'll just hold that a little bit and see what the activity is going to do. And a lot of this also has to do with, you know, I can't fix Karina here. She has to be able to put herself into a relaxed state because we're moving out of the fix-it mentality. How we take care of ourselves is our responsibility, not somebody to tell you what to do. They can make suggestions, but it's up to us individually to make the choices of what we intuitively find to work for us. Okay, and this is... Now this whole thing from this little crepitus thing has shown me that there's quite a bit of um, tension going all along the scapula here. So I'm, it's, it's, it's starting to iron out. And Karina does a lot of lifting and carrying equipment and all that is 
putting stress in this area. And it's also right along the trapezius muscle. In case you're wondering where I'm at, I'm along the trapezius muscle along the edge of the scapula. And this was on a right side, which probably is her dominant side. Now it's still there. There's still, but it feels like it's smaller and in two little pieces instead of just one kind of big piece. And you can work it as long as you feel you need to, but if it won't work out completely, then it may unwind itself as time goes on. But if you feel any kind of change in the way that it is, which I, I feel change in it. It's still uh, not a happy muscle, really, or happy attachment, because it's still got a little bit of tension there, but it has reduced quite a bit. So that's, um, we'll go on from there. And what I like to do next is get the vertebrae in the middle of the thumbs, and then just ride down that spine slowly. Sometimes you'll feel all kinds of things. And it may look like I'm kind of deep, but I'm really not. The muscles are opening up for me. I'm not forcing my thumbs in there. And now I'm down to the hips. Now I notice there's something going on here, which is some tension in the lower back. And it probably is related to the crepitus in the shoulder. And so this is where the alignment, the subtle alignment is really important, which is another thing that's taught in the foundations course. And I will tell you what I'm experiencing with regaining my walking ability. I'm noticing so much about what alignment is all about. Because if I take steps and it's not ready for the full weight on that leg, which it isn't yet. I, with the assistance of the cane, I still need to watch out for my posture because otherwise the other hip gets too much work and then it begins to hurt. Now here is another area where I wouldn't really call it like knots, but where an area of tension I think is really more accurate. Sometimes I think of knots like those little charley horses that you get in your legs at night that just take the muscle into a spasm. But this feels longer and like it's a longer tension. And it is kind of a knot, you could say, but it's also um, tension, uh, overuse maybe. And there she just kind of released like she got into a little bit deeper relaxed state and felt like the muscles let go a little bit more. It's kind of a team effort. You know, oftentimes there's people that need to just talk when they're in getting a massage. And I notice when that happens that they they really don't relax. They're so into their mind, into their thoughts, into their whatever happened, their past or the future, kind of being encased in that, that they're not in the now working to uh, alleviate that. And so that's something else. If you're going to get a massage, you've got to realize that it's 90% up to you and 10% facilitation from the therapist, roughly. I'm just making up those percentages because that's what it seems like. I can't fix anything. I can facilitate it to fix itself, but I can't fix anything. So here I'm just kind of following that muscle inside and out. This again is still along the trapezius muscle. And I'm going to go really slow through that because there is what would be considered a knot. But I'm going to change the language on that a little bit. It's a, a tension point or an overuse point. 
and it's on the right side so there's something she's much she works much more on with the right side uh, we do that we have a dominant side and a not so dominant side and so we're not completely totally balanced but we want to be as balanced as possible so let's see how this is now this letting go of that uh, tissue in here seems to have even brought this crepitus to a different level. It's there, but it's very small now. The kind of the, you kind of like going over a bump, it's not as big of a bump at all, and it doesn't feel like it's quite as crunchy. So I'm going to continue down. Now this, this side is a lot softer now. We'll just go down. Okay, now I'm going to take it down through the spine again. So that's all the things I found just by going down the spine the first time. And we're going to go down again along the vertebrae. That always feels so good. And then bring the hands back together. And then the, the vertebrae is, is actually um, between the fingers. There's a little misalignment right here in the close to the SI joint. It's more like the along the L5 S1 line where there's a little bit of it feels like misalignment happening. Karina did mention her low back was kind of bothering her too, so I can understand that. There's just by where the muscles are tense, how it pulls and re, you know will cause different resistance patterns. Okay, and one more time. I always like to do things in threes. And each time it should feel a little bit softer, a little bit more pliable. And it should open up a little more for your thumbs to go in. Yeah, here's that spot. There's something right there that's happening. It might be off in the um, fulcrum. And if it's off in the fulcrum, that's up in the head, and that's where you have to have the cranial work to balance that. And that's another thing that's taught in the fundamentals class, foundational work. You know, we can teach things to people that are kind of starting in the middle of something, but if you get to down to the foundational level or the basic level, that's where you master that, you have something. If you just kind of start out and you don't really know, you can do a fairly good job, but you're not going to have the understanding and you don't really develop into mastery. So for those of you that are out there, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of time to get to that point, but if you love the work, it's just the journey. And this feels real good through here. That crepit is just, oh well, it kind of let go. I don't feel it now. Not really. Yeah, I think it's pretty much dissolved itself. Okay, now this is a larger sweep of the back. Which just kind of pulls and stretches the muscles a little bit. It's getting into the fascial tissue somewhat, although we're not really directing it to the fascia. And then bring it back up. Okay. Now what's nice to do next is to go to the side and to pull the muscle um, along the top of the shoulder. And there's a little tiny bit of something going on in here. It's so small though now compared to when we started. So just kind of stretch these muscles along here. This is the top of the trapezius and you're getting you get a little bit kind of a bump of this is where the crepitus 
is and when I go at this angle at it I can feel it it it's really shrinking down in that crunchiness but it's still a little bit there and you can't always work everything out all at once sometimes you know people need to let it process usually 48 hours and to make the changes the tissues have to rearrange themselves And you have to realize that, especially, I see it in cranial work, people think one cranial session is all they need, but that's foolishness because the body will correct so far and then it needs to move again. And if you're under any kind of stress, you're going to be putting things into the body, thoughts or whatever, that you need to go into that deep state of relaxation to stay in the balance of everything and make it a part of your healing repertoire. Now I'm pushing the other direction with this. I'm going inward to just, it's a, more of a thumb iron technique. And it's feeling good through here. It's not nearly as tense. Now, I do notice that this muscle is a little bit bigger than this side, but that's because of the dominant side. And there we have it. Yeah, this is all pretty good. You know, you just want to take your time at this. I know that, you know, we're up against the clock, and especially when you're, if you're, doing this in sessions but as you as you can learn how to time yourself and time management with your work you can accomplish quite a bit and as you know more your hands know more of what they're feeling what they're looking for um, how to unwind it you can find that you can actually move pretty quickly through it I can oftentimes do it back work in, you know, a lot less time than I used to. But just take time with it and do what you can do. Okay, now I'm going to take this scapula, again, go underneath that shoulder and lift it up. Let me get my hand in there better. So you, the shoulder the shoulder socket should be in the, like the palm of the hand and then just pressing it up and there you can go under she's got a fairly good winging and a lot of that is because the muscles are very soft yeah just bring that up and Feel that underneath, you kind of press in underneath, you can't go too far. With some people you can get deeper in. It's usually really thin people that you can get farther in. More muscular people, it's going to hold down a little more. But there you can lift it up and I'm as I go under with this hand, this other hand is working too to work in tandem to lift that up and then that and that's all feeling really good okay now I'm just going to sweep down the back over the ribs here we're going down the vertebrae getting down to the end of the like about t12 and just this is like wrapping or unwrapping the body And then we're down here at the lower side. Now this is the side that is her dominant side. And this is a side where I felt something a little unusual. You have to be very, very mindful when you're doing this work. You can't be thinking of other things. And, and you also a good thing to do is to think of how, how it would feel if, if you were getting this done, what would you like? How would you like to have that feeling? 
and then just kind of work in that. But this is very rough through here. The muscles are real rough. And by rough, it's like, kind of like a washboard of sorts, not like big washboard, but it's it has that kind of a feeling to it. So I'm going to stretch the muscles here a little bit more to see if we can open some of that up because this is probably where the tension is in her low back and making it very uncomfortable. And Karina is quite tall, so, you know, taller people oftentimes have to kind of bend over more to get to us short people. So there's a little more stress that can happen on the back that way. And just going up and down through here. This is like cross fiber. And we're right on the hip crest. Yeah, so just doing a little bit of work like this. Um, Now, there was a comment about somebody having to have back surgery and fusions in the back. And sometimes they need to be done. Sometimes they're done unnecessarily, but sometimes there is really a need for it. If you get the cranial sacral work done, there's things you can do posturally. Um, people that have to have rods in their back sometimes. And the cranial sacral work will will um, allow the body will correct around whatever's going on with that. And it does take uh, pain and discomfort away. It can do quite a bit actually. I've seen some pretty incredible changes with people who have had to have that kind of surgery. And thank goodness for surgeons that can do those kinds of repairs because that's an important thing. You may not be recovered completely, but at least you'll have a lot more of your life back um, if you can get it corrected. But it'll help you even more if you go into the very subtle work where the uh, subtle structures are able to rearrange themselves back into a sense of alignment. And the body can also go into a deep state of relaxation, which is where the healing can happen once we turn off the mind. And now, I, the, what I've done this last couple of times is I'm just thumb driving up the abrector spinae, and I'm not feeling any kind of odd things going on except for, no, that's just going over the trapezius. So you need to know where the top muscles are and the bottom, because sometimes you'll go over a muscle and you think it's something else, but it's just over the muscle. So it's important to know where these muscles are. And then we just want to just do a little bit of kneading, effrelage, kind of it, together. But this is more kneading, where you're pulling that muscle away from the spine and working it this way. Okay, and then I like to take the whole hand and place it on the side of the body and then just ride that up on the one side and just check to see what I feel, if there's any other odd things going on. Then I'll stop and work on that. But otherwise, it feels pretty good. We've gotten that part worked out. And let me check. This is still, this is better, but there is still something going on. My guess is, is that there's a little misalignment that's happening somewhere else in the spine, probably up at the base of the skull in that region. Maybe a little bit of alignment can happen here. I'm above the, I'm, be, I'm between the atlas and the occiput. And there is a lot of activity in the 
SI joint, the L5-S1, um, that there is some correction going on. And it's this kind of thing that is really where, where your, your skill level, it, when it gets to this, you really do feel a lot in the body. Now this did make a little bit of a difference. I don't know. It'll probably continue to make a little change over the next 48 hours. So this feels like it has made some changes. There's still, it's still not quite the way I would want it to feel, but it has made some changes. So more than likely the body is going to work itself and reorganize itself a little bit, the tissues and the fascia over the next 48 hours. And it'll go as far as it can to, to re-correct itself. So, you know, sometimes it's kind of funny because the following day people are uncomfortable with that, but you have to remember that that's the healing process too. If a muscle is changing position, it, if it's going towards correction, it's gonna be just as uncomfortable as if it's going out of position <laughs> because the antagonist and protagonist muscles are going to have to, you know, do a dance. One's going to have to let go, one's going to have to hold on. So that's why it's important to understand what you're doing. And um, that way you can be more efficient. Now this would be the end of this one side, and I can go to the other side, but because of the camera angles, I'll just kind of do it a little bit differently from not really ergonomically, but I'll do the best I can. So here I'm just going to be stretching, and there's a little bit of crepitus that's now over on this side, but it's not, it's not there now. <laughs> I guess it was just possibly I just went over the erector spinae. I mean, um, excuse me, the levator scapula muscle. And now here it's pretty good. This is her non-dominant side, so it's the non-dominant side is usually uh, not quite as tense. And sometimes if someone's really tense on one side of the body, you might want to start with the less tense side and let that relax out and then go to the tense side. They call that in the cranial work the you know, the direction of resistance or the direction of ease and the direction of barrier where there's resistance. Okay, now let's see if I can figure this one out. For the scapula, you just pull that up, yeah, and get under there. This way you kind of see it from a different angle. You want to work underneath that. Okay. Some muscles that are kind of jiggly through here. There we go. They're all straightened out now. And then you want to go with the muscles on top of the scapula. That feels all good. There's really a, quite a difference. I mean, it's very subtle, but there is a, quite a bit of difference between the left and the right side. Okay. Now I'm just going to sweep down. So we pretty much, oh, I need to pull this up this way too. I got involved with lifting the shoulder first, but we're going to go this way and then I'll sweep down. The thing you want to remember too is that you want to do the same thing on both sides. Um, so figure out some kind of a routine and just memorize it and let it get to be second nature because there's nothing worse than the massage that you have really good work done on one side and then something very different on the other side. And I think a lot of time that's because the person was seeing that the clock was running out and so they had to hurry through another side, but that always seemed to bother me when I would get a massage like that. So I decided I wouldn't do that and I would make a routine and I've been using that routine for 36 years, basically. Sometimes I modify it a little bit, but um, 
It's a good routine. People have liked it. Now here I'm just, you know, wrapping down this direction and then working, you know, the and this side is so much different than the other side. So there's a little bit of that. Yeah, I'm not going to have to do too much there because that's all feeling good. So now I'm going to go up with the on the uh, left side of the vertebrae. This is the vertebrae right here. I'm just right onto the left side of it and thumb iron up. See if I feel anything happening with the muscles that are attaching to the spine. And there's number two. Sometimes I've gotten to the point where not so much in massage therapy because the work is different, but in the cranial work where I actually feel a shift in the frequency, the vibration of a person from before and after the session. And sometimes it's very, very, very um, noticeable. Like the difference between having the energy feel kind of like the skin of a kiwi into something really soft. So that's, as you work on this and you get well practiced and mastered at some of it, you can find out that um, there's a lot of things that you will be able to discover. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I usually have my fingers in it, so I guess I'll just ride up this way. You'll be surprised at how much more the subtleties can go when you really understand it in the, in the tissues and organs. Then you can begin to feel it in the energy and the frequency. And we're going up there. Okay, so there's that. Then we want to go down the spine, starting at the base of the neck. And it's just little vibrations back and forth, feeling where the vertebrae are, how they're stacked on top of each other. And just wiggling it down a little bit. And there's also kind of a thing you do with your fingers here because there's a spreading of the fingers. There's a lot, lot of little things that you do besides just holding a one position which is taught in the Subtle um, found Foundations course. Okay, so that feels good. So now I'm going to just grab these muscles and knead them up. These are the big re-erector spinae muscles. And then do another vertebrae, rock, vibration, whatever. And this is all feeling pretty good. The spine feels like it's in good shape. And then with the two thumbs, one on each side, you push up. Now this, going down the spine is different than going up the spine because going up the spine, you open up the vertebrae a little bit. If you take a look at an anatomy book, you kind of open them up because they, the vertebrae has some interesting range of motion. As a column, it has different ways it can go, but as individuals, individual vertebrae, one against the other, it's, it's kind of fascinating to understand. Okay, so now the next one is just going down each vertebrae from the base of the skull. And now here, you're not on the bone, you're in between the bone. And you'll be looking for certain things going on here too but it's nice to get between that those bones and sometimes too when the back is in a lot of discomfort you want to remember that you want to sit high on the sit bones those two bones underneath your 
hips when you sit, when you bend your knees, it's, you're high on the hips. If you sit high on the sit bones, it's easier to have your vertebrae straight and pulled up. Um, we don't really sit like that much. We sit more slouchy. And that puts strain on the body as well as causes discomfort. So here we are just at the bottom. And there we are at L5S1. That's feeling pretty good across there. Good enough. And then I'm going to just take my hand solid, and this is an energy transfer that I'm doing with my hand and her spine. And sometimes I can feel huge shifts going on. When I just do the energy transfer, I'm pushing the energy in pretty deeply. And that sometimes will, you'll feel some interesting things going on with the muscles or the fascia. Okay. And then we're just going to press down and going in between the ribs. The intercostal muscles, they don't get much attention. And do it on this side too, starting up here. Now I'm going just the opposite. It's really better to change from one side of the table to the other, especially when you're learning this, because you know it, your hands really have to change position. And then we're just going to pull up, like wrapping it together. And up and around. And then from the other side. And the thing is, is when you're on the other side, you know, opposite of what you're doing, it can feel different. So you have to kind of get yourself in a position to where it, it feels relatively the same, even though my fingers are leading in this direction and they were following in the other one. And then just a quick little check of everything. Feels good. Check where we had little issues come up. So I would like to have you start to think of the muscle knots as muscle tension. Uh, because that's really much easier to uh, comprehend in the mind. It's a different picture that you get and it's easier to understand how to unwind that when you kind of have a different image of what's happening. And it really is more tension. And the tension can get kind of knotty, um, you know, and, and there is ways to unwind some of that fascia that gets knotted up. But for the most part, um, it's, it's muscle tension creating that problem and not just didn't suddenly get there. It got there over a little bit of time or a strain or a sprain or lifting something too heavy, just, you know, something that happened to overwork the muscle or to take it into a little weaker pattern. Okay, so I think that's pretty complete. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I explained quite a bit and the more subtle stuff that I'm showing you is something that I am teaching in my foundations course and I'm going to be working to make that real thorough and very explanatory so that those of you that want to know more about how to do this you can you can get deeper into the work. So with that, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Karina, for your back. And please hit the like button. That means a lot. So subscribe and pass it on if you like this video. And thank you all so much for the comments and the real kind words. Thank you so much.
If you'd like to learn my subtle alignment techniques, you can join my course, The Foundations of Subtle Alignment. This 10 video course includes detailed instructions on hand placement and how-to for each technique. There is also a one-hour full-body session where I teach you the protocol step-by-step. Step. Addressing misalignments of the subtle anatomy will help alleviate pain and assist the body's ability to heal and to repair.